Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell trying to calm waters, promising the central bank it can be patient with rate hikes. Our very own Edward Lawrence sitting down with Vice Chair Richard Clarida for an exclusive interview. Edward. Yeah, Charles, I am inside the Federal Reserve Building built in 1937, joined here by Vice Chairman Richard Clarida, who took his office uh, in September of yeah. 2018. Let's start with the government shutdown. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been on ma many folks' minds at this point. The Federal Reserve doesn't shut down because they have their own budget, uh, other than the weather could possibly shut the Fed, <laughs> the Fed down. But it is affected, right? Some of the data you get out of the oh, Commerce yeah. Department you won't get. How do you get a full picture if you don't get the GDP numbers or if you don't get um, retail sales out of the Commerce Department? Well, you are right, Ed. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of important uh, data does come from the Commerce uh, department and as long as the shutdown is in place uh, we'll not be getting uh, that data so we'll do the best uh, that we can but obviously GDP data is is very uh, essential and we're looking at a wide range of other indicators so I th I think we're okay but ultimately it'll be important to get that data as soon as we can will it limit you in terms of getting the whole picture though of what the the economy looks like I don't think it's going to limit what we do in the sense that the GDP data when it's initially released also always has some some range of uncertainty about it and so the uncertainty now is a little bit larger and as I said we have alternative indicators so I, I think we're okay but we do want that data when we can get it. Let's talk about the federal funds rate. Yeah. Um, there were four rate hikes in uh, 2018, yeah. the last one in December uh, of 2018. Uh, the president has said the Federal Reserve is his biggest issue going mm. forward in terms of the slowdown of the economy. How specifically do you determine if the Fed becomes the headwind in the economy? Well, we don't think that's the case. Uh, we've been on a path for some time now of a very gradual nor <clears throat> normalization of policy uh, rates. Uh, as Chair Powell has indicated, and I have other officials have indicated going into 2019, the economy has good momentum into 2019. Our priority is pursuing a monetary policy that will achieve our objective, which is full employment and price uh, stability. Uh, we think we can afford to be very patient uh, in our meetings this year as we assess the appropriate uh, policy. But we think the economy has good momentum going into the year. In the Fed minutes from the last meeting, a yeah. number of voting members and non-voting members argued that maybe there should be a pause, yet it was a unanimous vote to, to raise the interest rates there. What was it for you specifically that you said, hey, you know what, we have to raise those rates in December? And looking back, should there have been a pause? Well, first of all, I don't, I don't believe that's the case. I, I, as you said, the decision was unanimous. I did support it. I think it was the right decision. And at this point, what, what we've been really doing is removing accommodation. We were at zero interest rates in the U.S. for a long time. Rates now at a, at a little bit under 2.5% are just above the rate of uh, inflation, which historically, if you look at a chart, is, is still a pretty low level of, of interest rate. So I think it was the appropriate decision to continue that, that normalization. But as I said a moment ago, we can afford to be patient in 2019. There's good momentum. But our goal is to implement the policy that will keep the economy at full employment and price stability. So is there flexibility going forward then for the rate hikes? There's, there's sort of forecasted in two rate hikes uh, for next year, but could we see a pause maybe to the uh, past well, the March meeting? I, I think, speaking for myself, but I'm, I think other colleagues, we're going to take this meeting uh, by, by meeting. You, you referred to, I believe, the, the, the blue dots. You know, we don't vote on those dots. Uh, each individual submits his or her views. And a lot has really happened in, since the first week of uh, December. So I think, as I and others have indicated, there's a lot of data that will be coming in. Uh, we'll be looking, um, in particular, global development. Some of the global data has been softening. And we're going to look at the whole picture. Uh, and so I think uh, that's the way I would characterize it. Um, you, last week, said Said that you saw a lot of investment, a pickup in investment for the first two quarters yeah. of last year, slowed down in the third quarter. Yeah. Do you expect to continue that slowdown, you think, through the fourth quarter into 2019? Right now, the data we've been getting, uh, Ed, uh, as we're getting the data, indicates that we probably, I think, saw some pickup in business investment spending in the fourth quarter. We won't know that till right. we get the Commerce Department uh, data. Uh, I'm certainly hoping that's the, the case. Uh, strong investment's important for longer-term productivity. Uh, and we did see, as you mentioned, some pick up in the, fir pick up in the first half of the year. Uh, and I think some indications are we got something of a rebound in Q4. Do you think this new message of, of it being a little flexible and looking at the data will give stability to companies to possibly open up some of their investment? Well, uh, again, we want to run the policy that, that serves the economy uh, as best as it can. 
Uh, I, as I mentioned, I think companies, you know, are looking at the economic outlook as, as are we. Uh, as I mentioned, there's been some global, uh, some slowdown in global outlook, and perhaps some global companies will factor uh, that uh, in. How do you assess the global slowdown? Talk yeah. about that a little bit. How will it impact uh, our economy, and, and could it be a severe impact to our economy? Well, it doesn't look severe now, Ed, but the U.S. is part of the global economy, and, 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 and as global growth slows, that tends to impact uh, our exports, uh, and, and obviously, so that's, that's the most direct uh, factor uh, that, that we'd look at. Uh, in the balance sheet, the yeah. Federal Reserve Chairman, sure. after the last meeting, said it was, it was on autopilot. Mm. Then he came out and corrected that or, or reassessed that, saying that, you know, possibly there could be some flexibility there. Last week, you addressed that uh, in your speech. Mm -hmm. Do you see flexibility in winding down that balance sheet? And where is that rate that it mm. should be? Because it was uh, $870 billion in 2007. Now it's $4 trillion. So yeah. where should it be? That, that, that's a great question. And as the minutes to our November and December meeting have indicated, we've been discussing that very issue extensively uh, in the uh, committee. Uh, the balance sheet uh, is smaller than it was uh, several uh, years uh, ago. We're making some important decisions this year on our long-run operating uh, framework. But what I can tell you, Ed, and your, and your viewers, is that any decision that we make on uh, the balance sheet or any other aspect uh, of our monetary policy uh, is going to be focused on achieving the goals that we want to. Uh, and if we think that any aspect of our policy stance requires adjustment, we won't hesitate to do that. And just quickly, the, yeah. the long run range for the federal funds right now is, is what, 2.8%, uh, yeah. just under 3%. Is that enough to head off the next recession? I know the Fed is trying to get that up in order to be able to handle that. Do yeah. we need it over 4%? Where do we need it? Well, that, that, that's a great point. We are in a world uh, in which not only in the U.S. but abroad, uh, policy rates and interest rates are lower, um, and that is a fact of life that we as policymakers have to, to deal with. Uh, the longer run neutral rate that you referred to is around 2.8 um, uh, percent, um, and I think that financial markets and folks here at the Reserve think that sort of that is in the range uh, that we'll be operating, somewhere between 2.5 and 3.5%. Is it enough to handle the next recession? Well, I don't, I don't see a recession on the horizon, but we have the tools that we think are appropriate to provide support to the economy if needed. But, Mr. Vice Chairman, I appreciate it. Uh, that's here from the Fed. This is uh, what we have here today, Charles. Uh, back to you. Some very interesting conversation.